Sarah. I'm Andy Robertson. I'm president of InfoMine. Uh, recently, there's been uh, some softening in commodity prices right now. Uh, I know that gold is still doing very well, but we certainly had problems with coal and uh, iron ore as well, too. Can you talk a bit about where metal prices have been going? Um, metal prices, of course, are very mixed. Mm. So as you've indicated already, that there's differences in the different uh, metals. And we have the metals like zinc and molybdenum and um, nickel that are way down. And then we have those that are sort of a little down and certainly enough to make people take up and uh, take note and, uh, and do some reaction. Those are like the ones like iron ore that you've mentioned. Copper has softened, but copper, has, copper hasn't dropped to the level at which it causes much distress. But then, of course, you've got the ones that have held a pie like gold, uh, silver and the big sort of opportunity that the gold and silver people are seeing is that this is an opportunity with the softening of the market, with contractors, with, uh, with um, um, uh, personnel um, uh, accessibility and uh, availability to be able to, to react and to, to um, change their modus operandi. So all of them are looking at tightening. You've been talking to some of uh, the senior miners around right now as well, too. I understand that you're involved with some of their projects. Uh, can you tell me about what the senior miners have been selling themselves? What are their outlooks right now for the economy, uh, also regarding uh, metal prices? Again, you have this large variability, and with some of them, not only variability, but volatility. And when one looks at the volatility in something like copper, it's nice and stable. It's behaved uh, in, a, in a very slow-moving fashion. It has gone up and down. It is responding. But it doesn't have the volatility that you see with the uh, um, reactions, for example, to the iron ore, where uh, uh, rumors as to price and price changes are changing things because there's still a very substantial um, uptake and use of it but there's clearly this concern that there is going to be oversupply. Currently, there's some oversupply, and the uh, the purchasers are using this as an opportunity to uh, um, get repricing that's favorable to them. So there's a lot of maneuvering that's happening in some of these markets that are much more um, um, volatile in 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 pricing than you'd think would be if you uh, think only about the uh, the supply and the supply side and the demand side. Um, there hasn't been this big a drop in the actual demands as there's been in some of the prices. What are some of the large miners doing right now if they've got a large project on the books right now or they've got something that's planned right now and then they're kind of a little concerned about the softening of prices looking forward right now how are they managing those pro how are they managing those projects and what are they doing with uh, the mines that they're operating right now uh, well let's take the first one that's the new projects what we're seeing is that uh, a number of the projects which are late um, or, or have still have quite a distance to go before they would actually turn ground on them, being terminated as uh, as development projects. In other words, they're going through their various gates, their fells ones, twos, and threes, and saying, "Let's finish at the next uh, at the next gate, and then we'll put it up on the shelf, and we'll pull it down again when we're ready." Um, when it comes to op operating mines. Uh, there's those that are cranking up because they're saying prices are going down, we've got to get our, our volumes up in order to get our incomes working. So some of them are, are actually pushing quite hard at optimization and improvements and production and so on. Um, the, so there's, 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 there's quite a difference between development side, which is slowing, and operating side, of which is there's a production push in, uh, in needs. Um, at the same time, there's, when one looks at the expansions, if there's expansion opportunities that they see as economic opportunities of improving existing operations, we're seeing those go ahead. But more and more those that require purely financial um, or uh, require financing in order to add to the amount of product that's out there, those are the ones that we're seeing um, become more hesitant, be, being allowed to, to slide a little. Uh, so far, there's uh, for 2012, there's been a tendency to try and hold with deadlines. Um, I suspect we're going to see, as we go into 2013, there's, there's going to be a, a greater amount of deferrals. 
Obviously, it's been tough right now for the junior market right now, if you can even look at uh, the, um, uh, the venture exchange right now as well, too. Any light that they see right now for the juniors? Um, I, I wish I could say yes. I don't see much light for the juniors. It's you know, we're in a cyclical market and it goes up and it goes down. And you can see this very clearly when we look at our career section and we look at the an amount of resumes that are coming in. Right now, we're seeing a lot of resumes coming in for exploration geologists. So they're the first guys that are coming off the boil and having to go out in the street and start looking elsewhere. Um, we're seeing a lot less advertising by other mining companies for uh, staff. Clearly staff are sticking. They're staying where they are rather than moving. So there's a, there's a loyalty improvement, which is great for the industry. Um, though I, I, I think the, the, the juniors, unless you're in the gold and silver area, are uh, in a fairly tough position. If you are in the gold and silver area, you sit with the unfortunate uh, stigma that it's been better to invest in the gold itself than to, than to invest in the gold producers. And I think the gold producers have become very conscious of this, and I presume that applies also to the silver producers. I'm not that close to them. But as far as the gold producers, we're hearing from most of them that their shareholders are saying to them, look, we believe in gold, we continue to believe in gold, we're going to invest in gold, but not in the gold mining companies because it's cheaper or more profitable to invest in the gold itself. So there's a change in the investor, um, a confidence in the gold mining companies, and unless they can get back onto a good um, uh, return on investment, um, they're, they're bound to start suffering despite the fact that there's high gold prices. Well, they are already suffering despite the gold prices. Uh, last question would be regional differences, uh, differences between Australia and Latin America or in the Americas here as well too, or even in Africa as well too. Is there a particular sector that is doing better or being particularly beaten up right now in these situations? Uh, well, as always, political risk is, is a very important part. So we see South Africa having an awfully tough time with the amount of writing that's been going on, the agitation by labor in order to uh, get higher salaries, improved conditions in uh, mines that are deep and uh, the, the, the conditions are very trying for miners, the living conditions are trying as well as the, the working conditions. One is obviously seeing a lot more unrest than you're seeing in places like Australia and South America. South America, we're seeing not so much the labor not the workers for the mines, but we're seeing the, uh, the public or the uh, communities that are affected. So we're having a very strong reaction happening in Peru. Uh, again, riots in the streets, marches, parades, blockages of roads happening. So political instability is affecting miners differently. So depending on what those countries are producing, there's uh, a, a big risk, in, uh, risk uh, intolerance that is, is happening with the investors that's saying, look, there's, there's just too much uh, at stake when uh, either the public or the labor can a have such a large effect on our investments. Um, having said that, there's a lot more stability in the operating mines and, and so on in the major producers, the politically stable ones, but of course it's regionally dependent on what the cost structure is. So what we've seen in Australia is a large rise in the cost structure. We've seen fairly large rises in the same sort of cost structures in places like Peru and Chile, much less in North America. So we've had the strange change in balance of where a mining engineer, that if we go back 10 years from, from, from today, was getting the highest paid mining engineers would have been in the United States and followed by Canada and then down to the South American countries. We've now seen a reversal of that. We've seen the really high salaries in Australia followed by places like Chile and um, to, to a large extent uh, places like Peru and uh, Brazil rising very rapidly and becoming equivalent if not ahead. And the United States being one of the places where you can now recruit good, cheaper, cost engineers. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>